Okay, so first thing, I just want to apologize for my microphone quality. I'm using one of those cameras you attach to your desktop, so I doubt the microphone on there is going to be going to be very good. All right, so let's jump into this. As you can see right here, we're going to be making these kind of like orange peel shapes. And in order to do that, it's going to take um, some fairly complicated geometry. So I'm going to define a few things right off the bat. Um, right away, as you can see, my radius. This is going to depend on whatever kind of, whatever size ball you want, right? So I wanted to make a, well, that shouldn't say three. That should say 1.5. Got to be careful on your math. I wanted a ball that was three, three inches in diameter. So radius is half the diameter there. So my radius is going to be a 1.5, right? The next thing is really important is we need to define the circumference of this circle so that the circumference is going to be all the way around. And we all know that circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius. So that circumference is going to be 2 pi times 1.5. And why that's important is when we're making our little orange peel here, we need to know what the length is, the length, the stretched out length of this all the way from North Pole to South Pole here, right? And then we need to know that because when we go to form our piece, it's not going to be curved, right? So we're cutting this out of flat, flat sheet. So we need to know the length from here to here. And then one way to do that is to measure the circumference and then cut it in half, All right? So we got a full circle, that's a terrible circle, um, but we measure the full circumference and then we know from North Pole to South Pole, that's gonna be half. And we'll erase that. Uh, we'll call this length, we'll call this length here, from North Pole to South Pole, we'll call that L prime. And that's going to be equal to one half the circumference, which is going to equal to pi times 1.5, which is going to equal to 4.71 inches on American. So now that we have these two pieces defined here, uh, we can do some other calculations. So I'm going to scroll down. And this is kind of a, uh, a skeleton of the actual flattened piece, right? So I'm constructing this ogive type shape. And if you never heard of the word ogive before, like I never had, when someone, whenever I was learning this from uh, one of my work colleagues, actually, I looked up ogive and I found a lot about graphs and there's a little bit on bullet making as well as how they like make maps in like encyclopedias. If you ever seen a shape like this, they're kind of like unfolding the globe, which is where I kind of got this idea from, but pretty interesting. So where was I? Oh yeah, this is the flat piece here. So this pink line, we've defined this as half the circumference L prime, which is equal to 4.71 inches, 4.71 inches. And the next thing I want to define is this maximum length from here to here. And we're going to call that theta. And that's kind of what I I think of as the ogive. It's the maximum length of this shape here, going horizontal at least. But in order to figure out how long this is, we need to first figure out how many pieces of orange peels we're going to use. And the reason why we need that is because we're going to be using the circumference in this calculation again. Uh, if I can scroll back up here, this ogive length stretches from here to here. So if we go on this equator, we can figure out the ogive length by dividing the number of pieces 
dividing the circumference by the number of pieces we need, right? And that's going to be exactly what the definition of that is. So we're going to take the circumference divided by the number of orange peels we need. Does that didn't make sense? I don't know. This this part didn't exactly make a whole lot of sense to me when I was first learning it, but now that I understand it, I mean, it's a lot clearer, so I might not be explaining it as well. We know that our circumference is 2 pi times 1.5. And the number of pieces you want to use is completely up to you. I've tried at first 10 pieces. I tried 10 pieces, but it, it turned out a little boxy after I was all done. And I found 16 pieces is a pretty nice shape. The more, the more pieces you use, the more spherical you're going to get, right? The less pieces, the more, the more boxy it's going to be. Uh, but it gets to a point where you're trying to cut these shapes out and then they're really skinny, right? Because the more pieces you have, the more your uh, ogive value is going to go down. So you got to find a happy medium with what you're able to work with. So I chose 16, pe 16 pieces. So we're going to go... 2 pi one times 1.5 divided by 16, and we're going to get a length of 0.58 or 0.59 inches, rounding up. So we can define this length here as 0.59 inches. The next thing I'm going to define right away is the center of each circle. So I'm making this shape out of two circles, right? That's the easiest way that I could think of. I'm going to define this center as C1 and then this center as C2. The next thing we're going to need is the distance between these, between each center. And I'm going to call that T for no reason whatsoever. Within circle C1, we have this red line right here. And just looking at it, that is defined as the radius. So any any line from the center of the circle to the outside is going to be the radius. <laughs> and then the final thing we need to define within here is going to be, before we can start plugging into some equations, is this halfway point right here. Since I'm assuming both of these circles are the same, it's going to be like reflective, right? So this length is going to be one half of T. So we got T and we got one half of T. So now we can start doing some calculations. So we see this triangle here and we're going to go back to school for a little bit. Everyone has heard of the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, in our case, we got the 90 degree we got the leg across from the 90 degree as r. So we're going to be r squared is equal to this leg, which is 1 half of t. So we got 1 half t, parentheses first, squared. And then this length, we haven't really defined yet, but it's the same as the t. All it is is 1 half of L prime. So we can just put that in there plus one half L prime squared. And that gives us a relationship involving the these three values R, L prime, and T. Since we know L prime is 4.71 we need to find another relationship relating R and T. And something I see right now is that R and T can be related by this radius. It's the same if you drop this all the way down here. If you drop this radius down, we're going to get a radius right here. And that radius is going to equal if we just add up the lines here, we got one half, 
one half of t plus one half of the ogive length. Can you see that right there? So now we have radius is equal to one half t plus one half of the ogive. And from here, if it's not quite clear what I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to get it where, so we're gonna, you guys yourself, when you're trying to build this template, you're gonna pick, you're gonna pick, you're gonna pick your radius, the radius of the ball you want, right? So my radius was three inches, or the diameter, excuse me. You're gonna pick the diameter of the ball you want. My diameter was three inches, which in turn made my radius equal to 1.5. The next thing that I picked was the number of pieces. And that's gonna be completely up to you. I picked 16. So since I have, I picked these two variables, now I am trying to get it to where you can just calculate this shape based off of, well, all we need is two things now. We need to know the radius of the circles that we're gonna be making our ogive shape out of. And then we need to know the distance of the centers of each circle, how far apart to make that. So I hope that cleared that up a little bit. So right now we have two equations, two unknowns we can solve. So if we go here, we can use old school FOIL or you can just plug this into a calculator. And I'm gonna do that, but I'll just show you the basics. So FOIL, right, first, in, outer, last type deal. So we're gonna multiply all these together and then we're gonna end up getting of 0.25t squared plus 0.295t plus 0.087 and what does this equal? That equals r squared. So from here, we can plug, so from here, we can plug this r squared value back into this equation, and that'll solve t for us. What you just have to remember to do is make sure you divide t and then square it, right? Since we know this value, that's just a constant, I'll let you calculate that out because this portion is getting kind of lengthy. I just want to get to the build already. What you end up getting here is you're going to get this value, drop this down, is equal to 5.546 times 0.5 squared t squared is equal to all this. And then you'll get your t value of 18.5 inches. Now we know that t is equal to 18.5 inches. You can mark 18.5 inches on a sheet of paper. Um, you're gonna need a big sheet of paper, I guess. So you're gonna mark just a line 18.5 inches long, 18.5 inches long. And then we're gonna mark our rate, figure out our radius so we can plug the T value back in to our, any, either of these equations, but this one's easier. So, after doing that, you get a radius of 9.54 inches, which is about nine and a half inches. Here, let me, let me do this. So I have a piece of paper right now. I draw a line that's 18.5 inches. Doesn't matter where the center is. So this is 18.5 inches. Next, I'm gonna take this and label it as C1. I'm gonna take this side and label it as C2. And then I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a circle with a compass or a piece of string and a pencil, and I'm gonna do 9.5 inches around. Bam, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. 9.5 inches, and then I'm gonna draw a circle, bam. And then we have our ojivical, <laughs> well that's a word, ojivical shape here. And we can cut this out and use this as a template. 
And once you do this, it's going to be important to, you can cut your first piece out of the steel or whatever kind of material you want to use, but always use, always use that first piece, first piece. Because if you don't, you're, you're going to slowly get off, right? Your measurements are slowly going to get off. And the more accurate you are with this, the better your, your sphere is going to turn out. So that's all I got for that. Um, I hope that wasn't too boring, but if you really need to know how to do this without using SolidWorks, I completely understand because I get SolidWorks free from my work. I don't get it for free. I just get to use their license, but this is how you do it. You can do it by hand. It's just going to take a little longer. So let's get to the build.